Battalion from the command. Alright, this is a quick training on the brand new APX 6000 XE radios. These are Motorola's. We're going to look at this thing real quick. As you can see from the video, this is the one with a microphone and we're going to talk about that in a second. Motorola has designed these radios so there's really no front or back. This looks like a front and this looks like a front. Okay, and I'm gonna, we're going to talk more about them in a minute. There's microphones on both sides of the radios. They use a microprocessor for noise cancellation. So they pick up wherever you're talking. Well, the mic closest will pick it up and cancel the other mics, and that'll cut down on the noise. All right, just to uh, talk about this, this radio is fully submersible. It's, it's fully submersible for two hours to two meters. And the microphone that comes on it, that is submersible too? It is. This is the microphone. It's the remote speaker mic. It has two microphones again and a microprocessor. The audio that comes so up. Um, so it uses directional processing with the microprocessor to determine where the audio is actually coming from. And it eliminates background noise and can either amplify the uh, the speaker's voice um, as necessary. It, it, you can really almost you could almost talk to into it to the clip, and it would actually grab your voice and throw it into the radio. It's it's fantastic. Um, we do have a push to talk button that's depressed, so even in gloves you can feel where you're at. It has a nice tactile feel to it, um, and depresses very well anywhere along the the push to talk button. You have volume control up and down with audio feedback as to how loud it is. You have a clip that moves around or you actually have a, a hook that you can use for your turnout gear. Um, you also have an emergency button on the top. If you depress that. We'll show that. Let's we'll show that in a minute it'll or turn so. turn the we'll strobe on and it'll start uh, switch over to the channel. Um, you can deactivate that by pressing it again. Let's start at the very beginning on how to turn the radio on and what every knob right. does on this radio. What we have here is in, on the top you have two knobs. You have an on-off button and volume control on the far side. It's it's designed for fire use, so it's 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 what I would call a heavy turn. Uh, it's very it doesn't easily turn. Um, volume is of course up. If you turn it back all the way down, you'll have the positive click that turns the radio off. These are digital radios, so it takes about five seconds to actually Wait. wake up completely. Um, the other buttons on top is you have another emergency button, uh, similar to the, identical to the remote speaker mic. You also have two um, rotary switches, or non-rotary switches, selectable. They're currently, those uh, position switches are blank. Uh, they, uh, the fire department has chose to have nothing on those particular ones. They could be programmed for other features in the other features in the future. And that's the ABC that I'm it's looking at It's the ABC right and then that's also the uh, the zero and uh, non-zero. Okay, These so those two are blank correct. and above that is our channel our, selector. That's channel select. We have channel stops all Fire, the way at the end, one. 16, and all the way at the other end which is one. And again, Fire, this is a fire one. radio so these are knobs that are Fire, quite... Fire, three. Um, uh, they're designed for being very difficult to turn Fire. accidentally uh, and they're also designed for use with gloves so they're nice and big uh, requires dramatic turning to actually get them to work and you just do, to uh, let everybody know that these are programmed the 16 channels that are the same as our vertex that we're using right now so fire one is on one and two is on two three is on right, three and fire one is also on the rear which is 16 Correct. And then you also have a little LED here that will tell you whether you're transmitting or whether the unit's actually on. Uh, if, when you're transmitting, that'll actually go, glow. Um, will I don't, it come on when you receive? 
Yes, um, again, I don't know if too many people are gonna be noticing it because it's relatively small. Um, you also get a positive feedback on transmitting and receiving and the top display. Let's turn it back on and just look at the display and we'll tell everybody because we can see it pretty good in this okay. video what, what it has. And what you do have here is you have essentially you have zone listing, which is the okay. zone two. Uh, we could switch to zone one, uh, that would be Z1. There's only two zones in this radio. Uh, and then it tells you the channel. I'll turn the light back on. Um, it's set for high power. It's not set for scan. It does have a battery alert that tells me that this thing needs to be in a charger. Um, the, uh, uh, if I change it, you'll actually see the, the name change. Mercy Statewide. Mercy St. Anthony. And you also have audio feedback that actually tells you what channel you're on. So that's always a nice feature as well. Mercy. Every one of the Fire channels four. has audio feedback. And again, you get the zone and the actual channel description. Okay, let's turn it around and look at the other display. Like I said, there's no front or back to these radios. So depending on how you carry it, this is the other big display. And we'll get the light back on there. The light button I keep pressing is the top button here. Okay. That's the, that gives you the light. Um, the uh, uh, you can also use that button on top to flip the top display. So if I hold it, it flips the top display back and forth. And this is like our vertex. So this doesn't flip. This this particular front display does not. Okay. Yeah, somebody tolling out. Uh, we got the clock here. Um, again, you have the speaker, high power, battery alert, Station it's, um, and two Charlie basically 13, telling me, you can see this drive. receiving some audio Unresponsive up here in the far corner, Adam Victor 40. that means it's actually receiving, and there it goes. So you do, you, every display is telling you something, whether it's an LED or the actual display of the radio on top or the front, you do have a positive feedback that you're transmitting or receiving. Cherry Valley Station, one, the clock can be Charlie changed 13, by hitting the clock button and then proceeding to change the clock. Drive, um, again, these are smart buttons across the, the area. You can change things. For instance, well, I'll show you really quickly how to look, look at the battery. Our battery is really low. so. It tells me some information about the battery. This is currently at 10% of the rated capacity, which is not very good. It's 480 million, or 489 million amp hours left, which again is not very good. That's probably about 30 minutes. And it's had two estimated charges in the lifetime of this battery. These batteries are Impress microprocessor batteries, so they communicate with the charger, the radio. In fact, everything on this radio is Impress. So the speaker mics, everything talks to each other for optimal use by the user. What um, What's our percentage that we should go down to before uh, we should recharge at? Well, these are lithium ion batteries, so you can top them off. So there's, there's no damage to the battery by charging it when it's at a certain percentage. I would say that 10 is probably a little low. Okay. You want to be able to have some usable life. I would want an hour's worth of use just in case you had to run and do a call. So I suppose I would, if it was below 25%, I would consider that a crisis and I would want to get it on the charge. Obviously, unless you're on a particular site. Um, okay. So again, the smart buttons change. Now this third button actually has functions as an exit button. Anybody that's used to using cell phones will be familiar with the buttons changing their style. You also have the middle button here, zone. We can actually change back and forth using the data buttons to zone one or zone two. Zone one is narrow band, zone two is wide band. Um, in time, the, the goal, of course, is to eliminate zone two. So currently, zone two is wide band, and we'll use that up until the narrow band switch over, which time you'll switch to zone one and be running. To select it, you just hit the select button, and then you would exit out. We're gonna go back to zone two. So just, just for me to talk about a little bit is mm -hmm. do not change the zones until we have you change the zones when we narrow band. That is correct. And every time we turn on the radio, you'll be able to see it says zone two there, and up on top. That is correct. You'll be able to see, we have it upside down. We'll turn it, there we are. There we go. We have it Z2, which is zone two. So that tells us exactly every day when we check our radios, we should make sure it's on zone two until we do the narrow banding. Yeah, that's something that, yeah, that has to be a, a administration mandate and no one should be messing with that right. until that point. But it's that easy, we do want to show you so that you don't go messing around with it. And if you do mess around with it and get it on the wrong zone, now you can look at this and say, 
got to go back to zone two. You turn it on, it's on zone one, you go back to zone two. Correct. I mean, is narrow band and wide band can have some functionality with each other, so it's important to note that it won't stop working, but if you're transmitting on a narrow band channel with a wide band radio, you're going to over deviate. Uh, some people may not be able to receive your transmission because it just won't, it'll see as noise. Uh, and on the flip side, if you're narrow banding trying to transmit into a wide band channel, uh, your audio may not be enough to open up the receiver. Uh, it's going to be a really light audio. Uh, people are going to have a hard time understanding you from that perspective as well. Okay, let's uh, look at the buttons. Uh, okay, again, we have buttons across the, the bottom. We have the uh, smart buttons that are essentially uh, de determined now. It's telling me low battery and red, which is a nice function. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess this is definitely an indicator that we should be getting to yeah. the... Uh, this is about 30 minutes of life left, which is not very much. Uh, that life is determined on a duty cycle of 5, 5, 90. That means 5% of the time you're receiving stuff, 5% of the time you're actually transmitting, and 90% of the time the radio is just sitting. Um, it Obviously, if you have a lot of activity, that battery's going to go down much quicker. Uh, the data button is uh, blank unless you're actually using the functionality, uh, so there's no way for it accidentally to get into harm's way there. Um, and that's pretty much it for the buttons. The, the uh, all the other buttons on this particular function only function when you're actually using one of the three buttons there. All right. The side buttons um, that we have, we have the top button which is used for turning the light on and off. To save battery that light will turn off uh, after a few seconds. Uh, you can also use that button if you hold it in to actually uh, flip the top display. Again the front display, or the, the, the flat face display does not change. Um, the uh, Middle button, I'll actually tell you some of the recent calls that have been made. Uh, again, you have caller ID with this, so this tells you some of the recent calls and when they were made um, by hitting the middle button. Uh, and the bottom one does the same thing, so there's, there can be no mistake. And we're going to talk about that real quick. If we could flip that display back to normal. Oh, um, exit. Okay, down below where low battery keeps going on and off. When we program these things, we're going to follow the same identifier that we have now in Firehouse and in our CAD system. You can see it says REO2A. A. Well, RE, Rockford Engine 2. Um, there's going to be four radios eventually assigned to your rig. There's going to be A, B, C, and D. We're going to come out with something that A will be the officer, B will be the driver, and so on. And then if it shows up REO2, that would be the rig radio. Here, here's another one. So these templates, here's another one that we can see. This is RE Rockford Engine 10A. So this would be the officer's radios. It not only says that there, but it also says that on the top when you turn it on, I believe. Um, I don't think it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yep. right there. If R you watch it there, you'll see it. RE10A. This is the... I, just to make sure... These radios have identifiers in them. They will identify each radio to each radio. Downtown, that is called a translator. And that will also identify you when you transmit downtown. And they will be able to see that that is engine 10A's radio that's having problems or whatever going on. So, okay, let's go back from there. Um, okay, so again, we have the light button um, uh, and the flip for the top, and then the recent calls list, which will tell you that some of the recent calls that have taken place. Um, again, this one's telling you that RL01A just made a call at 921, and that RQ05A made a call at 918. So these are just and, transmits that is right. picked up. And then you can go down uh, you, it'll do uh, the last few calls up and down. Uh, if you re turn the, ra the radio on and off, these calls do disappear. Um, and then it basically just goes through and it'll tell you a list of everything. That's so it'll see place. the last transmission. So if somebody's clicking the microphone and having some issues, we're going to be able to go back and see who exactly. identify what radio is clicking the microphone. So if the emergency button is pressed, you'll be able to go back and tell exactly you know who is pressing the emergency button. It, it, there's there's a lot of advantages to actually having a recent history, um, and of course they would have recent history down at the the 9/11 dispatch as well. Okay. Um, 
Uh, there's nothing on the other side of this radio. Well, Again, we've got a one uh, a one watt speaker. Uh, this blue button means that it's Bluetooth capable. All it has to be done is turned on. Um, the battery, the chargers can be charged. Uh, the radius can be charged in the charger, or you can actually remove the battery. Let's see that. You press on each side and basically remove it. And then that can be sat into the charger as well. Um, there's only one way to switch it, put it in there, so you can't really do it wrong. And it does go in bottom side down. And then another battery can put, be put back on, much like a power tool. Um, and then it's back on again. Back on. And it does have a ring around the top. That's part of this XC that's designed to protect the surface. Regardless of which way you drop it, it's not going to land on anything. Big question, how are these going to hold off with water? Well, they'll hold off really well with water. The, you've got a Lexan case housing um, that doesn't impact the IP rating of this radio whatsoever. The IP rating stands for intrusion protection. This radio has such a good intrusion protection, Motorola had to develop its own standard called Delta T to give it a standard of how well it uh, resists intrusion by dust and water. Um, the IP rating is inside this Lexan case. So in other words, this radio plastic could be broken completely in two. It still has the same IP rating before the plastic was broken. So it has a very good seal. Um, now, of course, these are FM approved radios and FM approved accessories and batteries. So this radio is not a sparking radio. So if you're uh, working in a natural gas area or um, agriculture or dust area where you know explosive spark or a spark could cause an explosion, these radios do not um, you know cause that. Okay. They're FM approved. And these are P25 compliant. They are P25 although compliant. Although we're not using digital, we're still an analog. That's correct. But product. you can do digital is anytime you wish just by reprogramming. And for those who wonder if these things are VHF radios and not Starcom. They are VHF radios, they're not Starcom, so they're designed to work on fire channels completely. There are Starcom radios that look very similar to this. Um, you can tell, if you want to know, one way to tell is you can look on the antenna. The antennas are labeled. This one says VHF. If it was a Starcom, it would say 800-700. Or if it was a combination, it would say VHF 700, 800, and that would be a radio that does both. And there are radios that do do that. But okay, these now, aren't. now that we have it, let's go back to the microphone. Uh, sure. You went through some, some pretty good stuff. Let's set that one back up on our red so that we can do an emergency on it. Um, so we can show you exactly what's going to happen with that emergency button. So you press the emergency button. You gotta press it and hold it for some time. There we go. Now it tells you who has pressed the button, but yet you can transmit and say we've got your your uh, your signal. This strobe you can be seen through 10 to 15 feet of smoke, and it will continue to flash until they turn it off. Now the way to turn it off, of course, is to press the emergency button again, to press it and then let go, and that will. You get rid of the emergency button. So um, when you set this thing after you press the emergency button, it gives you a, some time, some transmit time on this, but very short. It it it's yes, it's it's designed basically to just transmit out a signal that I'm here, I've got an emergency, and then anyone else can transmit in and say, what's your emergency? What's the problem? So we can. That's a programmable feature. Uh, we could have programmed that to immediately transmit and stay transmitting, uh, or but then that would have. Uh, you know, not allowed, for instance, someone else. Let's do else. it again. Does it set off an audio tone? Yes, it does. Okay, so um, I'm going to look at this radio here, and you're going to see what the other up? radio is going to show. Okay, there we go. So we'll press this button. He's going to press the button here. Press the button. And press it and hold it for three seconds, I believe. Oh, it's... Here we go. There you go. There you go. And this is what you're going to see on the other radios to identify what radio it is and we can see that what and radio now you can transmit back saying I've got your signal what's your emergency and of course they can turn this off these microphones are so new that currently there's a national shortage on them uh, they're, they're as good as gold right now uh, they're still programming new feature sets into this microphone and we anticipate down the road more buttons will have more functionality and possible functionality where you can turn the strobe on 
without sending off the emergency button if you are in a smoking environment. I, there, we think that's an advantage and we've talked to the engineers about it. The ability to use the strobe without an emergency. Um, and the, right now that feature set is not available, but it may become available. Um, but again, these are extremely, the radios themselves too, uh, one of the common failures of a speaker microphone is a, uh, a cord. These have field changeable cords. So you can replace the cord. Since these microphones are pretty expensive, oh, screw so it is not field. It's, let me re re uh, rephrase that. It's, it is replaceable, it's not field replaceable. Um, but the cords can be changed out, which is a nice feature set. Um, it, it, again, this is right. the cutting edge of, of technology in speaker microphones. There's nothing better. This won a, several awards at um, the electronic shows at and the end of the year. This is totally submersible. Yes. So, again, okay, two microphones. The, the button here. That button there um, has no function yet. Okay. We've not programmed that. Again, there's a lot of feature sets that are coming that are not yet available on and, this particular device. And we device. can uh, reprogram that they can to be our reprogrammed. liking at any time. That's correct. And the, the programming for the speaker microphone is actually through the radio. Um, and new software, new firmware are coming out all the time. So I anticipate that by next summer there should be a, 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 lar a larger feature set available for this particular speaker microphone. All right, did we leave anything else okay. out? I think we got it. We did cover the volume button. Um, I think that was it. Uh, if you do need to remove the speaker microphone so you can use your dual microphone set, that is field done. You can just thumb screw that out, pull it up, and now you have a radio that you can use. Again, dual microphone capability with this radio. You can actually transmit it as you're spinning the radio around and talk into the bottom of the battery if you want. This will, will amplify the voice as necessary and eliminate background noise. Absolutely cutting edge.